Hello, PI Institute's webinar, Conducting a Strategic Planning Audit. My name is Andre Costa, and I will be your host for today, along with our presenter, Aline Shonda. This webinar is part of a series of free educational materials that aim to enhance the knowledge and know-how of those interested, while also creating a bridge between us as a company and you, our public. The KPI Institute is a research organization specialized in business performance. It operates research programs in 12 practice domains, each linked to a certification course, ranging from strategy and KPIs to employee performance and from customer service to innovation performance. The KPI Institute continuously builds on its values of best know-how, data and facts and common sense to achieve its mission of integrating performance as a discipline through research, publications, and what interests us today, through educational programs such as this webinar. Today, 12 years after the KPI Institute was created, we can proudly say that our products have reached professionals in five continents, and that our public comprises a worldwide community of 73,000 members online and 28,000 registered companies on smartkpis.com. Today's webinar will aim to deliver how to assess whether your organization is making the best use of its tools and resources. And it will be delivered by Aline Shonda, the Head of Performance Audit Services at the KPI Institute, with over 10 years of experience in the banking sector. For more than three years, he was an internal auditor, gaining an analytical perspective on operations and valuable insight on risk assessment and auditing methods and procedures. As an auditor, he holds valuable experience regarding the design and implementation of internal processes, which serve to properly identify and assess risk and compliance with regulations and reporting requirements. This presentation lasts for approximately 30 to 40 minutes. Please feel free to ask any questions you might have during the webinar, as they will be answered at the end of the presentation in our Q&A session. Enjoy the KPI Institute's webinar conducting a strategic planning audit. Now I would like to invite Aline to begin his presentation. Thanks, Andre, uh, and thank, uh, thanks to everyone that joined the webinar. Uh, my name is Aline Shonda. I'm the head of performance audit services at the KPI Institute, and I also coordinate the activity of the global performance audit unit. Today, uh, we're going to talk about conducting a strategic planning audit about two weeks ago, we launched a series. Um, the first webinar was focused on integrated performance audit that captures um, key uh, strengths and capabilities of a performance management system. And in this regard, uh, today is going to be about strategic planning. And in the following weeks, I'm going to talk about performance measurement, performance management, uh, developing a performance culture, and uh, employee performance management. Now. Today's agenda for the webinar looks into the benefits of conducting a strategic planning audit, the key knowledge areas, what we look into, uh, the maturity models that we developed for assessing uh, the maturity level of your strategic planning capability. Uh, we're going to talk about the audit process and also the audit outputs, what you get from, uh, from this audit, and we're going to have a, a session of questions and answers in the end. The key learning objectives uh, of this webinar is for you to acknowledge the importance of having a strategic planning audit because it supports the competitive uh, advantage of your organization. Uh, second, you will need to understand uh, the impact of such an audit on operations and get familiar uh, with the tools that are used for conducting uh, this audit. You will get valuable insights uh, onto the audit process and how to use the audit outputs. To begin, we're going to speak about uh, the benefits. First of all, an audit is an objective assessment that you have the right tools, processes, and people in the right place. The second benefit of, of an audit is that uh, it helps you identify the maturity level of your strategic planning capability and helps you progress from one maturity level to another. Um, all through this presentation, I'm going to speak about maturity levels, 
because this is very important uh, to us and it's very important for organizations to know exactly where they stand and what they have to do to progress. Another benefit of conducting a strategic planning audit is maximizing the added value generated by this process. And this audit helps you elevate current practices to best practices because the audit methodology is built on best practices. We help organizations support tracking progress uh, with initiatives designed to improve the strategic the strategic planning process. And uh, you'll see further when we talk about the audit outputs, how you can use um, the roadmap for improvement during performance review meetings. Another benefit of strategic planning audits is to educate stakeholders to be oriented towards continuous learning and improvement. And to make a joke here, um, I used to be an internal auditor for a commercial bank um, a couple of years ago, and by that time, uh, my 12-year-old nephew asked me, what's an audit? I stood still for some seconds, didn't know what to answer, and I told him, well, it's like getting your homework graded by someone who's rewarded if it's wrong. So this was my point of view then, because most audits, when I'm talking about internal audits and also financial audits, just highlight the weaknesses and processes. And this is the difference uh, between a traditional uh, internal audit or financial audit and auditing a performance management system because our reports highlight both the strengths and the weaknesses of performance management system. You have to know what you're doing right to keep doing it and what you're doing wrong to improve it. Now, to get back to the benefits, um, uh, last benefit, uh, but it's very important, is to justify investments in process improvement. Uh, I'm talking about past, uh, past investments um, in improving the strategic planning process. Maybe you, I don't know, subscribe to, to some services to make uh, better external environmental scans when formulating strategy or other investments that you, that you did to help, this, uh, to help on this process. Now, I'm going to speak about uh, key knowledge areas, and basically this is what we assess. First of all, uh, the strategic planning maturity model, uh, it's uh, the framework, it's built out of six dimensions. And we're looking, about, uh, we're looking at strategy envisioning, and this refers to the identity elements of an organization, like vision, mission, and values. We look into how they relate to the entity's purpose and provide a sense of direction towards the desired state of evolution. We evaluate whether they are formulated in a simple but comprehensive language and whether they, embedded, whether they are embedded in the employee's behaviors, because this is basically the, the purpose, to drive performance. Now, next we're assessing strategy formulation and this reveals how the strategic planning process takes place, which stakeholders are engaged and what instruments are used to perform the external environmental scan and define the current state of the entity. Next, we're assessing strategy focus and this provides an overview of the practices used to convert strategy into simple actionable objectives. And this is very important because we're looking at how you assign KPIs to track objectives achievements and to connect plans with actions. The fourth dimension is strategy articulation. And it, this indicates whether the strategy is aligned and integrated across all levels and functions of the entity. We look at the tools and instruments used in the implementation process. Uh, strategy review, I think it's very clear here, <laughs> it's about the ability of the entity to adapt to changes and keep an updated strategy because things change, market change, customers change. Um, and we do a thorough review of the process and the stakeholders involved in this uh, review process. The last dimension is also very important. It's strategy governance and communication, and this reflects the efficiency of the strategy communication process. Uh, mostly the level of awareness, transparency, and understanding in regards to the roles and responsibilities for cascading and aligning the strategy across the organization. Now, it's a very thorough assessment, um, and I hope that <coughs> you'll be convinced of it by the end of this webinar.
Now, uh, I would like to thank uh, to ask my colleague Andre uh, to help me with this poll. I want to ask you, the attendees, uh, to look at this statement. Uh, it says, my organization is effective at strategy formulation. You have five options. Uh, either you strongly agree with the statement, either you just agree, either you uh, agree, uh, neither agree nor disagree, whether you disagree or you strongly disagree. Please take one minute to answer, uh, to tell me how you feel about this statement. I'm going to repeat the statement. It says, my organization is effective at strategy formulation. I'm going to wait a minute now for your answers. Okay, I hope uh, everything, everyone got a chance to answer the poll. Uh, I'm going to ask my colleague Andre, can we see the results? Uh, I see. So most of you said that you neither agree nor disagree with the statement. The reason why I've asked is because it's very important, uh, your perception is very important uh, in terms of strategy formulation. <coughs> And I want to show you. I wanted to show you uh, the results of a study that we did in 2015 um, on countries based in the GCC region. And the results show that most respondents to our survey said that they strongly agree and that they agree uh, with the fact that the organization is effective at strategy formulation. So this is very important. Uh, for organizations, uh, for employees to be aware of the strategy formulation process and its effectiveness. Now, regarding this study, um, we also had other statements. The next statement that I wanted to show you is the one uh, regarding strategy execution. Now, the statement was, my organization is effective and strategy execution. And just like before, uh, most respondents uh, fell into the category of agreeing and strongly agreeing. Now, to make an analysis uh, on these results, 68% uh, of professionals agree and strongly agree with the fact that the organization that they represent is effective at formulating strategy, while only 57% of professionals believe that their organization is effective at strategy execution. So this is basically the point why we developed this audit to help uh, organizations not only be effective at formulating strategy, but also be effective at executing strategy. Now, um, I want to show you another statement from our study. Uh, it says, it is understood by the senior management team that, that managing strategy is primarily about managing change. And 68% uh, of professionals partaking the survey agree or strongly agree with the fact that managing strategy, uh, strategy is primarily about managing change. Now, uh, another statement from our study says we proactively monitor the external environment to identify threats and opportunities. And again, 58% of respondents claim that uh, they actually do. They monitor the external environment to identify threats and opportunities because this is also very important and it relates to the strategy review process, one of the dimensions from our strategic planning maturity model framework. Now, uh, I spoke about maturity models, and I promised you I'll tell you more uh, throughout the, the webinar. So this is the section uh, where we're going to discuss about maturity models. Uh, the purpose of maturity models, first of all, is to let organizations know exactly where they stand. And 
to speak more about um, them, uh, maturity models are tools used to assess the complexity of a certain organizational capability or system. In this case, we're talking about the strategic planning capability. For all our audits, uh, the complexity, the maturity, uh, is reflected on a five-level scale, starting from level one, initial, level two, emergent, level three, structured, a level four integrated and the maximum maturity level that can be achieved it's called optimized and it's level five uh, a particularity of this maturity models uh, and the reason why they are so effective is that there is clear criteria defined for each maturity level and this is based on over 10 years of research and our practical experience in the performance management field uh, another thing uh, which is also very important, uh, progression from one level to another becomes more difficult as maturity increases and specifically it's easier to go from level one initial to level two emergent uh, than going from uh, level three structured to level four integrated because the requirements to achieve that level are higher. Now. <coughs> To get into details and tell you uh, and provide you with information more specific about the audit process, uh, we're first going to talk about the three main components. As to be uh, as the audit to be a thorough assessment and to be objective, uh, we first do an evidence-based assessment. This evidence-based assessment relies on statements that reflect best practices and that are rated uh, by a certified performance audit practitioner on a scale from 1 to 5 based on the extent to which the statements apply in the audited organization. Now, the perception-based assessment uses a scoring methodology, it's a survey methodology, it's a survey sent to internal key stakeholders going from top management, middle management, unit head supervisors and the ones that work every day with the performance management system and I'm working I'm talking about here I'm talking about KPI owners and data custodians now the perception based assessment as I told you relies on a survey it contains statements uh, like the evidence based assessment it contains statements that reflect best practices and they have to rate the statements on a scale from 1 to 5 based on the extent to which they apply in their organization the third component and the last stage of the audit process is the interview-based assessment because from our experience there are statements both in the evidence-based assessment and perception-based assessment that can be or um, that should be further discussed with key stakeholders and I'm talking here about uh, department heads, unit heads, uh, top management depending uh, on the topic but the interview based assessment uh, basically um, is designed to help the performance audit practitioner clarify the findings, consolidate the findings and provide relevant recommendation. Now as I told you before the evidence-based assessment uh, in the case of the strategic planning audit contains more than 25 statements that have to be scored uh, on a scale from 1 to 5 by the performance audit practitioner and the scoring is done uh, on assessment criteria and for all the statements we have more than 90 assessment criteria it's a very very thorough assessment for the perception-based assessment uh, the same more than 25 statements that are scored or on a scale from 1 to 5 by internal key stakeholders and the interview based assessment the last component uh, it relies on mostly individual interviews with selected key stakeholders to ensure consistency in results now for the audit we use a dedicated online platform which facilitates the audit process and it makes it easier both for the client organization and for the performance audit practitioner. But I'm going to go into the, the platform a little bit later uh, throughout this, uh, this webinar. Now, the scoring methodology is very simple, easy to understand and easy to apply because the evidence-based assessment score, uh, which is an average score of the scores um, uh, of the rating for each statement weights 75% in the final score while, while the perception based assessment weights 25% now based on the final score um, the strategic planning 
capability achieves a certain maturity level, going from initial to optimize the five maturity levels that I spoke about uh, before. And you can see here the ranges to be very clear and easy to understand how the maturity level is achieved. Now, I, wanna, I want you to clearly understand um, <coughs> the audit process and I'm going to give you some examples uh, from the first two dimensions from strategy envisioning and from strategy formulation. First of all, when we talk about strategy envisioning, uh, basically we're talking about the identity elements of the organization and we're talking about uh, vision, mission and values. Now it's not a surprise um, that vision uh, needs to answer the question, what does the organization aim to achieve? while the mission has to answer the, the question, why does the organization exist? And the values have to reflect beliefs, commitments, and expectations from employees. Now, an example of a statement falling in the category uh, of an evidence-based assessment is the mission reflects why the organization exists and its purpose. And as an example, I'm going to repeat the mission of the KPI Institute, which is to provide integrated performance solutions through rigorous research, educational programs, and advisory service. And this can be um, part of the evidence-based assessment because we can ask for, for documents to support this statement and rate it from a 1 to 5 scale based on the extent to which it applies. Now, uh, another example is from the perception-based assessment. And this uh, statement says, the mission statement provides both frontline employees and the management a strong sense of direction and priorities. This is something that the mission has to do to provide a strong sense of direction and priorities. As it would be very difficult uh, for the performance audit practitioner to rate this statement uh, because he will have to interview everybody, <laughs> every employee of the organization, both frontline employees and management, to ask them directly and to, I don't know, thoroughly uh, judge whether it provides a strong sense of direction and priorities. Um, we put it in the perception-based assessment. So basically, Selected internal key stakeholders have to rate this statement on a one to five scale based on the extent to which it applies. It's their perception, it's reflected in the audit, and it counts in the final score and the achieved maturity level. Going uh, forward, uh, I told you I'm going to give you an example also from a strategy formulation process. We have a statement here. Uh, it says the strategy formulation process is well articulated and thoroughly documented. Now, this reflects a best practice. And since it is an evidence-based assessment, we have assessment criteria. And the assessment criteria for this statement <clears throat> is very clear. We're talking about the, the strategy formulation process. So the first criteria is it has to be captured in a process map. And this uh, relates uh, to the fact that it has to be documented. It has to be supported by external environmental scans. Before, looking, uh, before formulating strategy, we have to look at the environment. We're looking at the market. We look at trends in, in the market and we're looking at other criteria which is relevant for our activity from the external environment. Uh, the third criteria is supported by an internal analysis. We have to analyze the current state of the entity, so this also has to be documented. Um, the fourth criteria is supported by insights from internal stakeholders, and this we look into uh, who's invited, to attend meetings, workshops for formulating strategy, uh, what insights are collected. And the last assessment criteria is supported by insights from external stakeholders. So here we're talking about customers, we're talking about regulators, and we can assess whether insights are collected or not. To give you an example uh, from customers, we can monitor complaints. This is a very simple and clear example of getting insights from external stakeholders. When we're talking about uh, external regulators, we have um, thorough reports on the activity. Now, I told you that uh, the audit process is supported 
by the gpanet.org online platform. And this is an example for the statement that I just told you. Uh, the strategy formulation process is well articulated and thoroughly documented. This is how the performance audit practitioner uses the platform to rate each statement uh, based on the assessment criteria uh, that I've just uh, shown you. And there are dedicated fields for observations that can be later on uh, put in the audit report and reference to documents as to clarify any disputes, um, any information that is not accurate uh, for the audit practitioner to keep track uh, of um, what document, what page, what section provided him with the information needed to rate the document to read the statement. Another statement example is relevant external stakeholders are engaged during strategy formulation by collecting their inputs. I told you before, uh, it's easy to assess whether it's easy to assess. Uh, you can assess by, by looking at documents whether external stakeholders uh, are engaged during strategy formulation process, whether insights are collected from them. But it's very hard for us to assess whether relevant external stakeholders are engaged. So this statement falls into the perception-based uh, assessment because each organization is different, uh, every activity has its particularities, uh, so we're getting this info, this input from them, uh, whether relevant external stakeholders are engaged during this process. And the GPA uh, unit platform also supports this uh, perception-based assessment as the survey is deployed directly from the platform. The performance audit practitioner um, uh, using the admin section uh, gets to see the user results list and just export the answers. It calculates the average value automatically, so it's very easy to consolidate the findings of the perception-based assessment. Now, I told you how the, the audit works, what's the process, what are the benefits. I'm going to start talking about the outputs because this is also very important. Um, as I said in the beginning, uh, we're not only uh, highlighting the weaknesses of performance management system. In this case, the weaknesses of the strategic planning uh, uh, capability, but also uh, the strengths. So, first of all, there's an audit report that highlights findings and has clear recommendations for performance improvement. Basically, um, this contains uh, what we've identified, uh, positive aspects, ne negative aspects, based on the assessment criteria that I've spoke about uh, before, and basically based on, on the framework that we've developed uh, on years of research and practical experience. Now, beside the audit report, um, Client organizations also receive an executive dashboard. And this is basically a, a visual representation of the scores achieved for each section, for each dimension, for each maturity model framework used. Um, the example that you see uh, in the slide is for the integrated performance assessment. It contains the score for all the capabilities that are assessed during an integrated performance audit. Now, if we're just talking about strategic planning audit, this executive dashboard will contain the scores achieved on each dimension, uh, strategy envisioning, formulation, focus, uh, and so on, uh, a little bit more in detail regarding the statements that were uh, used during the audit. As I said, the audit report tells you what, uh, what is good, what is not so good, weaknesses, and provides you with recommendations, what you should do. Now, the Roadmap for Continuous Improvement report goes from what you should do to how you should do it. And it contains clear actions that the organization can take to improve performance, because this is the ultimate uh, scope of, of the audit, of the strategic planning audit, to improve the strategic planning uh, process, to improve the strategic planning capability. Alongside with the Roadmap for Continuous Improvement report is the tool that I spoke about before, uh, is the Roadmap for Continuous Improvement infographic. And in this infographic, uh, the actions that we recommend in the report are summarized and put in a visual display so the infographic can be used, for example, during strategy uh, performance review meeting. Uh, 
if you have cho uh, chosen to, if you have chosen to do something to improve the process you need to monitor that initiative and it's easy for you to do so if you have this infographic uh, in hand during performance review meetings Another output is the certificate of recognition um, for the assess capability. In this case, we're talking about the strategic planning capability. So each client organization that goes through the audit um, will receive a certificate of recognition with, with the achieved maturity level. Now, I want to ask you, after uh, all this uh, being said, what is the maturity level of your strategic planning capability? And now I want to see what's your perception about the maturity of your strategic planning capability. And I will ask my colleague uh, Andre to start the poll. As uh, before, uh, I'm going to leave you about one minute to answer the poll. And then we'll look at the answers. Okay, I think everybody got a chance to, to answer the poll. Can we see the results? Okay, so most of you answered um, that the maturity level of your strategic planning capability is emergent. And second, I see initial. <laughs> okay, that's very good. Uh, your perception is very important uh, because you know best um, an audit is an external evaluation um, and it's supposed to provide you with an, an objective assessment. But as you saw in the audit process, perce perception is very important. Now, for you to better understand or assess the maturity level of your current strategic planning capability, we developed self-assessments. And not only for strategic planning, uh, the self-assessment survey is designed for both uh, the strategic planning capability and the performance measurement, management, performance culture, and employee performance management. The five capabilities that are assessed during the integrated performance audit, uh, we developed self-assessment for each one. Now, if you just log on to the website, gpaunit.org, you will see uh, the second option in the main menu after domains, it's self-assessment. You just have to scroll down, choose strategic planning, and uh, you will start the survey. It contains 24 uh, statements. There are both from the evidence-based assessment and the perception-based assessment for the results to be um, to be very clear and to be relevant. Now, at the end of the self-assessment, after you've answered all the 24 uh, questions, you will receive a report with the perceived maturity level of your strategic planning capability. Also, going through the self-assessment and seeing, not only I shown you about four or five statements, going through 24 statements will help you better understand uh, the purpose of this assessment and how we do the audit because all of those uh, 24 statements re refer to best practices and this is how we assess the maturity of, uh, of your strategic planning capability. Now, um, what I want you to, to keep in mind uh, and to remember uh, after leaving this webinar is that um, the purpose of the audit is to indicate the maturity level of your strategic planning capability and to uh, support improvement, improvement in this process, in this capability. Now, the audit outputs, uh, as I said, highlight both the strengths and the weaknesses of your strategic planning uh, process and also support performance improvement because you have the audit report, you have the executive dashboard, you have the roadmap for improvement report, and the infographic. They are all designed to help you support uh, performance improvement, not just uh, some, uh, some report that you'll put on a shelf and you forget it's there. 
Also, elevating current practices to best practices can only do good, can only maximize the added value generated by your strategic planning process. And the strategic planning audit can be conducted and facilitated uh, by the dedicated online platform, which I invite you all to visit and to scroll through to get more relevant information about uh, auditing performance uh, management systems. And last, um, try the self-assessment survey because, as I said, it will help you gain a, a clear perspective and better understanding about the strategic planning maturity assessments. Now, I want to thank you all for attending this webinar. I hope the information was useful, um, and I want to see, uh, I want to answer any of your uh, any of your questions. So, I would ask my colleague Andre to see if we received any questions. Thank you very much for your presentation, Aline. And as he has stated, we can now begin with the Q&A session. So if you have any queries, any curiosities, any questions, feel free to address them now. Well, seeing as there are no questions, oh, we just received one. <laughs> um, okay, let's, let's hear it. So the first question would be, can you give a few tips and hints and advice about simple steps to start a strategic planning process in uh, someone's company? Like the first yes. few simple steps. Yes, the first few simple steps that you can do is analyze the current state of the entity. This is performing, uh, usually companies perform a SWOT analysis, looking at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You have to know your activity uh, in detail. What makes you good? Uh, what makes your, your clients choose you? Uh, what are your weaknesses? in the activity that you that you are undergoing and this will be a clearly first step second uh, you need to look at the external environment uh, <coughs> because you might draw a strategy that cannot be executed you might be a little too ambitious <laughs> or you might have i don't know uh, some some fears that uh, you can't uh, go for uh, too high results or achieve greatness now this will be the clear first steps for you in the strategic planning process. First, perform a current state of, uh, of your entity analysis. I recommend the SWOT analysis and perform an external environmental scan before starting to write the strategy. All right, thank you very much for your answer. And now another question would be, can you give any examples of leading tools in the strategic planning activity tools and instruments that are useful and how do you ensure that you're using the right tools and that the right tools are in place? I understand. Well, when we're talking about, uh, about tools, we're talking uh, about your internal processes, like do you have a process map? You saw the criteria before. Is everything set and documented? And do you organize uh, meetings with your colleagues? This is before I said the, about the analysis, the current state of the entity. Which internal stakeholders do you engage? But we're not talking about tools uh, like uh, Microsoft Excel or, no, I'm talking about the means uh, in which you write the strategy and you execute it. Now, um, going through um, our experience uh, and 
the dimensions of the strategic planning audit, uh, we spoke about execution, strategy execution, and transforming uh, strategy into actionable objectives. Now, we have, this, we have uh, the strategy formulated, uh, we have to formulate objectives. These objectives is best if we put them um, in a strategy map, this is a very good example. This is a, a great tool that, that you can use. In the strategy map, you have uh, highlighted uh, the areas to which the objective uh, pertain, and you have cause and effect relationships between them to know how uh, one influences the, the, the other one. And when you have these objectives um, set and put on the strategy map, uh, my advice to you is to use a scorecard. Uh, the relevant key performance indicators that help you achieve those objectives had to be uh, had to uh, have to be put in a scorecard for you uh, for you to have it easy to assess progress. Okay, where I stand now. This also relates to, to strategy execution and monitoring of execution. All right, thank you very much again. And another question as well as a statement, yes. which says that. Um, strategic auditing seems to be very process-based, but um, the person asking the question says that he views strategic audits as how external environment reviews, internal environment reviews, and mission statements and other such elements all fit together. And um, he points out the fact that you did not discuss any of these in particular or you did not touch upon any of these. Can you give oh. a reasoning behind this? Yes, uh, I didn't speak uh, much about uh, how they fall together because I wanted you to <coughs> clearly understand the structure uh, of the audit. Uh, I spoke to you about the um, dimensions of the strategic planning audit and I'm going to uh, review them now. I spoke about envisioning, formulation, focus, articulation, review, and governance. Just by looking at all the, the, these elements, you should gain a clear picture, an integrated picture. And as you also uh, highlighted how they work together, uh, I told you before, you write the strategy, you have the identity elements. From the strategy, you write objectives, which are later on um, measured by KPIs, and the strategy map that I've told you before. These were, these were clear examples of how, everything's, how everything works together. Thank you very much for your presentation. And this also brings us to the end of our Q&A session. Any other questions that may have gone unanswered will receive an answer from Aline as soon as possible. So don't worry about that. Now, Aline, could you please... Um, Tell us, any, do you have any last words for our listeners? Any parting messages? Yes, um, since this is an interesting topic <clears throat> and um, a 30-minute webinar cannot cover uh, all aspects of a strategic planning audit, please feel free to, to contact us. Uh, you have a contact form on the gpaunit.org uh, uh, online platform for any additional questions. You also have contact details, email addresses, telephone numbers, because we're very open to, to discussing uh, this uh, audit services that we provide. Uh, I want to thank again all of the attendees for participating in the webinar, and thank you, Andre, for, uh, for hosting. And don't forget uh, to visit the website and try the self-assessment to gain a better understanding about the strategic planning uh, maturity audit. Thank you very much once again for your presentation. Thank you. The KPI Institute appreciates your interest in the webinar Conducting a Strategic Planning Audit. Follow our websites and our social media channels to find out more details and to subscribe to our next webinar, Data Analysis, a Complex Process, Make Sure You Master All of It, which will be held in approximately one hour by Adriano Tsoyu, a statistics expert with over 20 years of experience in the field. Also, if you are interested in getting a certification granted by the KPI Institute on vital areas within the performance management discipline, you can explore our scheduled courses on marketplace.kpiinstitute.org. 
Thank you again for your participation and have a nice day.